So here's a, a flask I have with some ferrous sulfate in it. As you can notice on the little droplets all the way up. None of them have oxidized into the ferric ion. So this is all in the iron two state. Um, the way I was able to do this is I, uh, I had a, a batch of uh, ferrous sulfate that had been oxidizing into ferric uh, compounds and uh, it really needed cleaned up. And uh, it's always been difficult for me to get a nice clean batch of ferrous sulfate. I've done it before, but it was uh, tremendously difficult and I had still you know some byproducts off to the side that I was able to sort out but this I'm hoping will continue to stay looking incredibly nice um, I what I did was I uh, heated the solution that did have the ferrous uh, sulfate monohyd monohydrate crystals I just woke up <laughs> I'm not drunk I swear uh, anyhow yesterday I'd uh, hot filtered it after heating up this solution and uh, got all the crap out on uh, a glass fiber filter paper and then I filled this flask up with uh, argon and so even if there is any oxygen in here it's going to be sitting below the argon and uh, yeah unless I go shaking that up there's not going to get you know there's not going to be any oxygen um, available to oxidize my uh, crystals here. Now getting them out is going to be a different story. Um, I'll probably just, uh, after I open it up, I'll uh, just kind of flood it again with uh, some more argon and then I'll uh, kind of break it up to get the crystals out. But I'm going to be making a batch of synthetic pyrite again. And uh, I should uh, have uh, good results that I can end up with from uh, forming this from start to finish and uh, the cubic pyrite that I will be forming uh, will be visible under the microscope if I'm lucky I might be able to even see some of the brassy color um, you know just I don't know if I'll be able to get it on video but uh, a lot of times I'm able to form like these little hollow spherial bubbles inside of the uh, hydrothermal autoclave and it'll be a, a neat little experiment and I'm trying to make these to give to a friend so he can uh, check them out and play with them um, and it's been a while since I made any synthetic pyrite I honestly don't know if I've got any videos on YouTube showing it, but I do have an album um, of the synthetic pirate I've created that I've shared numerous times. Um, and I even have posts on Science Madness somewhere about the, the synthetic pirate. Um, most of the time, uh, you hear of uh, synthetic pirate being black, but you can actually make it that brassy yellow color um, if you are able to make large enough crystals which it's not that difficult to do um, the temperatures involved are quite low uh, you can do this uh, I prefer 175 degrees Celsius so yes you can do this in your oven um, using a hydrothermal autoclave in your oven is not a joke though <laughs> uh, it is scary every time I think and so I wait until you know uh, I have access to the oven at night um, but the temperature is not that high and I don't even come close to exceeding the max pressures that my uh, autoclave is designed for plus it does have an emergency release in case it uh, does become overpressured, but still, um, I'll go over the process then, and I'll explain everything in a nice little video on making synthetic pyrite, and 
the parameters that create nanocrystals and the parameters that create microcrystals. I aim for the microcrystals because that's what I'm able to view under my microscope. If I was trying to make photovoltaic cells, then I would aim for the nanocrystals, which I do plan on doing eventually. Um, but if I can make a good yield of micro size cubic pyrite, then I should be able to make a very good yield of nano size cubic pyrite. And at that point, I'm going to see if I can get uh, someone uh, to actually examine it under their, mic uh, their uh, scanning electron microscope. Um, but I'm also looking at other materials too. Uh, graphene was one, uh, but I'm way more interested in phosphorine, which is the equivalent of graphene, only you're using phosphorus. Um, uh, purple phosphorus can form these very thin layers. They're single layers, but they're zigzaggy, so they've got a greater surface area. If you apply the uh, nanocrystals of synthetic pyrite to this layer, then I think that you've got some potential of creating uh, photovoltaic cells, um, which hypothetically are 1,000 times more light absorbent than uh, current silicon dioxide based solar cells. We'll see. I'm just a guy doing uh, chemistry and science experiments out on his balcony and in his home office, so it's not like I've got like a certified lab or anything.